So, uh, welcome everyone. We've got a special guest in the building, Mr. Jim Crompton. <clears throat> We're getting ready for our first annual Permian Oil and Gas Data Conference. I'm Tyler Yancey. I'm part of the SBE uh, Data Analytics team where we talk about anything uh, data analytics, data science, uh, any any data relations at all. And we've got a quite an event coming up here in April and, and we have a, a special guest speaker that will be presenting on a multitude of things, Mr. Jim Crompton. How's it going, Jim? Going pretty good this morning. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, you know, Jim, just to get us kicked off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, fair enough. I'm, um, well, as you said, right now, I'm a professor of practice at the uh, Petroleum Engineering Department at Colorado School of Mines. I've been uh, doing this uh, this gig for about four years now. Um, it's kind of an accidental second career after my uh, 37 years in the oil patch uh, with Chevron Oil Company. Um, I'm actually a mines grad um, in geophysics, so I start, I'm a, started out in geoscience and working for Chevron in the, in the mid 1970s and worked in uh, Denver and in Houston and New Orleans um, in the UK. Uh, a lot of interesting places. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to have one employer, but many different careers over that period of time. But 2013, I retired from Chevron. I moved back to Colorado, which is my home country. Um, I'm a Colorado boy from ranching in the in the mountains to farming in the in the plains. So, uh, uh, and with that, I was asked a few years ago to uh, create a capstone course for a petroleum data analytics minor in the uh, pro, uh, the at the school. And so, with that course, it's now led to two more courses that are again the same thing: petroleum data analytics but as part of an online graduate certificate program. So um, kind of been talking about all things analytics. Um, I'm not the programmer. You, you won't learn about how to write a better Python or R script from me, but you'll uh, I try to cover a lot of areas about how analytics are being applied in drilling, completions, production, reservoir, now even the new kind of themes around environmental and methane emissions monitoring and carbon sequestration and you know other kind of areas within the industry but you know analytics isn't new and uh, engineers have been trying to analyze data ever since they had their first piece piece of data and could fill up an excel spreadsheet so it's just the new applications the new technology the new insights that we can uh, we can gain uh, that i think is the story i'm trying to tell the the new graduates for the next generation workforce. Very cool. Yes, sir. That fits totally in with what uh, we're all about. With this upcoming seminar that we have, what can we look forward to? Uh, what are you going to talk about in the webinar? Well, I'm going to try to draw a whole bunch of things kind of together. Um, one of the quotes that I always use in my classes is from a the 1960s, an English statistician by the name of George Box, who said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. And it, it kind of gets to this idea of just how much the hope and the hype, I guess, from um, uh, machine learning, you know, sort of technique. So I guess I'm going to try to talk about, you know, the data is always bad. AI is not magic, but every once in a while it is very useful giving insights to things that maybe our physics-based models uh, can't get to. And we really need to try to push ourselves in terms of efficiency and safety and environmental footprint and, um, you know, kind of the whole profitability of the industry and the reputation of the industry. So this will be a, um, you know, kind of more of a, instead of a deep dive on any one topic, it'll be a, a broad coverage on a lot of different things that I think are relevant and kind of all fall under this new found interest in the industry around um, uh, data-driven uh, predictive sort of models. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very exciting presentation. I'm very much looking forward to it. 
so I wanted to just kind of break the ice a little bit more, just uh, so the audience gets to know the presenter a little bit more. So I'm going to ask you questions, some laid back questions, more about your background, some kind of fun, fun questions. So my first question is, if you could read one book again for the first time, what would it be? Well, I guess my the the secret here is I, I read a lot of science fiction, and I I think that helps my imagination. But uh, you know, I, I, often than not, I'm 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 into the I know the world of, um, of wizards and dragons and demons and all things like that. I just started that series, The Wheel of Time. That's um, the first book, 750 pages long, and I think there's 20 books. So I'm going to be at this for a while. But if I had to go back, go back and read one, I mean. A, it would be one of my own books, and this is not self-promotion, but when I retired from Chevron, um, I co-authored a book with Dutch Holland called the, the Future Belongs to the Digital Engineer, and that was 2013. And I think, you know, there was some, if I had to go over again, I'd like to rewrite that book. I mean, I, I think it was mostly right, but I think, you know, with 10 years ex kind of experience looking backwards, I could probably give even better advice uh, within that book from the experience that I've had right now. I mean, today I am teaching things that I never even learned 10 years ago. So clearly the fast pace of all this technology and all the rest of it, you know, means you have to be nimble. I mean, I'm, university, we teach you how to learn. We don't teach you everything you need to know. And the, then you have to go into industry and you have to keep, keep on learning because particularly on the tech side, not so much on the engineering side. I mean, the the, the reservoir still behaves, the reservoir always behaved, and the engineering still behaves well, as the engineering is supposed to. ARP's equation still works, Darcy's law still works. And so don't throw those things away. Matter of fact, those are physics-based constraints that we we need to understand. Our data models don't you know, kind of go flying off the rail. But uh, uh, clearly, the, if I had to get back to your question, I think I'd like to rewrite my first book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I... I uh... I like I like what you you said there on you know school teaches you how to solve problems. When I first started as a production engineer, I had a mentor, and he was constantly telling me as a petroleum engineer, as a production engineer, your job in life is to be a detective. And and so what we do is we piece these tools together, this information, and we're uh, just trying to solve the case of being basically like a well doctor, right? You you know a it gets you B, and you can solve for C. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. It, I think the whole forensic idea is a great metaphor because we you're, you're problem solvers. I personally had the idea is that the drillers spend the money, the production engineers make the money, and the reservoir engineers take credit for it all. <laughs> all right. So uh, another another kind of fun question. Do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents. That's a that's a tough one. I think you know if my hidden talent, if you will, is of course I'm I'm sitting up here every week lecturing to my students, but I'm not a great lecturer. I, I think I'm a very good storyteller. If I had my hidden talent that would try to talk about it is is trying to take even in industry use cases and tell a story with them. You you talked about the detective side of it. That's a storytelling, you know, kind of metaphor. But whether you know, you going into data visualization, telling a story with data, telling a story with images. You know, I, I think over over and over again, if I'm, um, you know, useful sitting uh, in front of a class or hopefully in front of your um, your conference in Midland here coming up in uh, in April, um, I think it's going to be about telling a story so that I, you know, it isn't lots and lots of facts. It is a story that relates the facts in a way that you hopefully might be able to remember them. Yeah. Yeah, that's that is an awesome talent to have to be able to tell a story, communicate uh, and help people learn. My my hidden talent is uh, I a lot of people don't know this about me, but I used to play the drums back in in high school. I played the uh, the quints and the marching band. I, I after after high school, I found out that there's there's not a whole lot of opportunity to play the the drums in a whole lot of places without uh, making a whole lot of noise and disturbing neighbors. 
So I don't get to play with the drones very often anymore. Well, that, that, that's good. Uh, I think my favorite instrument playing was only the radio. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing you at the annual Permian Oil and, and Gas Data Conference here in April. Uh, we looked forward to hearing from you then, and we appreciate your time here today, Jim. And thank you for stopping by and let us uh, getting getting to know you a little bit more. You're welcome. I, I've been looking forward to this thing for a couple of years because you've been talking about it. I did a, a thing on a virtual you know, kind of version a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm in, I've been involved in SPE, the digital energy technical sections now for about a decade. I, I love working with uh, regional societies. I just gave a talk to the Denver one uh, just uh, on Monday. So whether it's Gulf Coast, Permian Basin, Denver, uh, Rocky Mountains, I, I, I love working with uh, the SPE uh, sort of organization. So, um, you know, the, the, I'll see you in Midland. All right. Yes, sir.